You don't have to be Jewish. <laughs> A call from Long Island. Hello? Hello, Mama. Hello, darling. How are you? Terrible, Mama. Terrible. What is it, sweetheart? Tell Mama. Mama, Mama, we're snowed in here. The car wouldn't start this morning. I think both kids have the measles. The doctor can't come until five o'clock. I'm coming down with a cold. The freezer is broken and all the food is spoiled. And the house is a mess. And on top of that, Mama, 20 ladies from my Hadassah chapter are coming for lunch at one o'clock. Mama, what am I going to do? Don't worry, sweetheart. Mother is here. (laughs) First of all, I'll go to the supermarket and I'll pick up to eat. (laughs) Then I'll take the subway to the Long Island Railroad and I'll take the train. Please, darling, it's only an hour and a half to the bus. And then I'll take the bus, and from where the bus stopped, I'll walk the 14 blocks to your house. And for you, darling, I'll put the children to bed, and for you, I'll change the sheets, and I'll give them an aspirin so they shouldn't yell, and I'll clean up the house, and I'll cook something nice for the 20 ladies. They'll love it. Just don't worry, darling. Everything will be okay. Isn't that what a mother is for? Oh, Mama. Thank you. I feel so much better. By the way, sweetheart, if it's snowing and the car wouldn't start this morning, how did Sam get to work? Sam? What's Sam? Sam, your husband! My husband's name is Paul. Is this Tremont 71166? <laughs> No, this is stream on seven, <laughs> one, one, seven, seven. Does that mean you're not coming? <laughs> Home from the office. Sweetheart, your honey bunch is home. Where are you? I'm hiding. (laughs) I've got a surprise for you. Where are you? I'm hiding. I bought you those gold earrings you wanted. Where are you? I'm hiding in the front closet. The reading of the will. (laughs) May I have your attention, please? This is the last will and testament of our dear friend and relative Samuel B. Cohen. I, Samuel Benjamin Cohen, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare this to be my last will and testament. Number one, to my son, my beautiful boy Sheldon, (laughs) my firstborn who made me proud of him all my life, a fine son, a good husband, a wonderful father, and the best dentist in the United States. (laughs) To my son Sheldon, I bequeath (laughs) tax-free One million dollars. Wonderful. Isn't that magnificent? Good luck, Sheldon. <laughs> Number two, to my beautiful daughter Jane with a Y. <laughs> <laughs> to that lovely child who always got high marks and helped her mother with the dishes when we couldn't afford a maid who got a scholarship to Hunter College, who for a long time has been a little too particular or she'd be married already. (laughs) 
To my lovely daughter Jane, with a Y, tax-free one million dollars. Oh. Such a generous man. Isn't that beautiful? Mazel tov. <laughs> Number three, to my beautiful wife Miriam, friend, companion, love of my life, to the lovely Miriam I give with pleasure everything that's not in her name already. <laughs> the white Chrysler Imperial with the white sidewalls <laughs> and the Prince's telephone, the Picasso from the back of the store, <laughs> my Arnold Palmer golf clubs with a new leather bag, and tax-free $2 million in cash. Enjoy, sweetheart, enjoy. Oh, what a marvelous husband. An angel, not a man, an angel. The Picasso from back of the store and everything. <laughs> Number four, to my brother-in-law, Louis, who lived with us all of his life, who never had to do a day's work, who knew how to handicap the ponies better than anybody, who only smoked the finest cigars, mine, to my brother-in-law, Louis, who all his life said I would never remember him in my will. Hello, Louis. <laughs> the diamond. It's a very nice flight, isn't it? Very nice. By the way, I can't help but admire that fabulous diamond ring you are wearing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's 40 carats. <laughs> it's the famous Plotnik and diamond. <laughs> the Plotnik diamond? Forgive my ignorance, but I'm not familiar with it. Well, uh, between the Star of India and the Hope diamond, is the Plotnik diamond. <laughs> I never knew. You know, I would give anything to own a diamond like that. Oh, believe me, you wouldn't want it. Along with this diamond comes a case. The Plotnik case. The Plotnik curse. <gasps> Isn't that romantic? Not so romantic. If you know what kind of a case goes along with it, it's terrible. What is the curse that goes along with it? Mr. Plotnik. <laughs> Quickies, the astronaut. Isn't that wonderful, Mama? That White and McDivitt went around the world 62 times. A big deal. <laughs> if you got money, you can travel. <laughs> <laughs> the school. All right, children. Now we will play a game of association. As I call on each of you, just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Billy Davis. My daddy's sending me to camp this summer. Good. Now, Alice Thompson. I like to play with dolls best. All right, Alice. And now, Jack Adelstein. I pledge a thousand dollars. The confession. Sheldon. I'm dying, and I have to go with a clear conscience. You're my partner, and I want you to know that I'm the one who stole the $150,000 from the safe. I'm the one who sold our secret formula to our competitors. And I'm the one who blackballed you at the country club. Simo, who do you think gave you the poison? <laughs> The jury. This court will please come to order. Mr. Rabinowitz, you are the foreman of the jury. Have you reached a verdict? Judge, Your Honor, we have been listening to the facts in this case for six weeks, and it has been a wonderful experience for us all. We, the jury, would like to thank you for the way you have conducted this case. Thank you, Mr. Rubinowitz. But the verdict, please. Certainly, Your Honor. We, the jury, 
Mr. Cohen, Mr. Fine, Mr. Landsberg, the lovely Mrs. Berkowitz. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rabinowitz. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Rabinowitz, the verdict. Coming, Your Honor. Mr. Goldberg, Mr. Katz. <laughs> Mr. Stein, Mrs. Cantor, Mr. I'm not lovely. The lovely Mrs. Cantor. <laughs> lovely. Mr. Rabinowitz. Mr. Finkelstein, Mr. Bloom, and Mr. Pinkus the Furrier. <laughs> Your Honor, the 12 of us have spent the past four days in the jury room debating this case. And we examined the evidence pro and con in backwards and forwards to decide in the American way, did he or didn't he do it? <laughs> Mr. Rabinowitz, the verdict, and now. Immediately, Your Honor. <laughs> we, the jury, after careful deliberation on this case, have decided we shouldn't make spin. <laughs> the president. Mr. President, the President of Israel is here to see you. Would you show him in, please? <laughs> oh, this way, Mr. President. Thank you. My good friend, how nice to see you. It's a pleasure to be here, Mr. President. And please accept the warmest regards from my ladybird. Thank you, and please accept the warmest regards from my fagula. <laughs> Well, how are things in your country, Mr. President? Many problems, Mr. President. I know you have many problems, but your problems are nothing compared to mine. After all, you only have two million people in your country, while I have over 190 million to contend with. That's true, Mr. President. You are the president of 190 million people. But don't forget, I am the president of two million presidents. <laughs> The cocktail party. Nice party. Yes, lovely. I'm in advertising. I'm with BBDNO. And I'm in woman's wear. <laughs> you may have heard of us. Finkelstein and O'Brien Limited. Finkelstein and O'Brien? Well, that's unusual. You think that's unusual? I'm O'Brien. <laughs> Final discussion. <laughs> Mama, I haven't got much time left. And before I go, I want to tell you that after I'm gone, you should give the store to our son, Jack. But Papa, you know Jack. He always wanted to make changes. He'll run it down. Better you should give it to Joey. Okay, Mama. But the house in the country should go to our daughter, Ethel. Papa, what does Ethel need that big house? They have no children. She'll never use it. Better you should give it to Doris. Okay, Mama. <laughs> but the new car. I would like for our Freddy to have. Freddy? But, Papa, you know how crazy Freddy is with his reckless driving and with the girls. Better you should give the car to Jack. <sighs> Mama, who's dying, you or me? <laughs> More quickies. Cry for help. I am I thirsty. I. Am I thirsty? Wait, sir. Hold on, sir. I'll get you some water. I am I thirsty? I am I thirsty? Here, sir. Drink this. I was I thirsty? <laughs> Mr. 
panic. Doctor! Doctor! Is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? Yes, madam, I am a doctor. Oh, doctor, have I got a daughter for you? <laughs> Two husbands. Hello, Sam. How's your wife? Compared to who? <laughs> the convicts. All right, you three prisoners line up here. You men tried to escape and you were caught. And as captain of the guards, the warden has ordered me to give each one of you three lashes. Oh, boy, I'm trying to sum up. All right, all right. Let's pipe down. This is a progressive prison. And the warden has said that each one of you can have a protective coating of your own choice on your back before you get lashed. Okay? Hodges, your face. What do you want on your back? Cover my back with oil. Okay, cover his back then with oil. Come on, let's go. Smear it on there, splash it on his back. Let's go. Okay, Hodges, take your punishment. <laughs> Okay. Now you, Wilson, what do you want on your back? Nothing. Whip away. Okay, tough guy. You asked for it. That's one. <laughs> and that's two. And that's three. All right, Wilson, that's all. Okay, Cohen, you're next. What do you want on your back? On my back, I want Wilson. <laughs> The housewarming. Good morning, Mr. O'Hara's office. Yes, just a moment, please. Mr. O'Hara? Yes. It's your mother, Mrs. Horowitz. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Mama. Hello, Jaime. Mama, where were you last night? I told you that we were having the housewarming for our new duplex on Park Avenue. We wanted you to come, Mama, and we waited for you and you never showed up. Sophia was very disappointed. It's a big, beautiful building you just moved into. You were in the building, Mama? Yeah, I came to the apartment house five o'clock. I was in the lobby until 11, and then I left. Mama, why didn't you come up? I forgot your name. <laughs> He was short and fat and rode out of the west with a Mogan David on his silver vest. He was mean and nasty right clear through, which was kind of weird, because he was yellow too. They called him Irving. Big Irving. Big short Irving. Big short fat Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the west. He came from the old bar mitzvah spread with a 10-gallon yarmulke on his head. He always followed his mother's wishes. Even on the range, he used two sets of dishes. Irving. Big fat Irving. Big sissy Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. Irving. 141 could draw faster than he, but Irving was looking for 143. Walked in the soul saloon like a man insane and ordered three fingers of two cents plain. Irving. Big fat Irving. Big sport Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. James boys was coming on a train at first son and the town said, Irving, we need your gun. Well, that train pulled in at the break of dawn. Irving's gun was there, but Irving was gone. Irving. Big fat Irving. Big help Irving. The 
142nd fastest gun in the West. Finally, Irving got three slugs in the belly. It was right outside the frontier deli. <laughs> he was sitting there twirling his gun around, and Butterfingers Irving gunned himself down. Irving. Big fat Irving. Big dum dum Irving. Big dum dum dead Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West.